Hey, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, just welcome. Going to start with a question today. Have you been up into your attic recently? Could be your attic, could be a parent's attic, could be a grandparent's attic. Either way, somewhere up there will be a box and it will be stuffed full of these things. Memories. Locked away, doing nothing, forgotten by everyone. But if you know where your grandparents or your parents or your old pictures are, there's something you can do to bring them back to life, which is scanning, making them digital, being able to use them all over again. Now, up in those boxes, there will almost certainly be these things, prints. You don't really want to bother with them. What you want to look for is something like this, colour negatives. Could be black and white negatives. could be medium format negatives. It could even be, probably in the case of your grandparents, glass slide. Either negatives or positives, but they're made of glass, or good old slides. Now these are mounted, but you can also get them unmounted, just like negatives. Either way, I'm gonna show you how to scan everything here Apart from the prints, because we don't really need those. So, let's have a look. What are we going to need? I'm just going to set these down over there. Obviously, you're going to need a scanner. Connected to that scanner, you're going to need a computer. But, I promised that this is going to be on a budget, and this scanner cost me no more than £10. Yep, £10. And that is roughly $12, 13 $15, something like that. So mega, mega cheap. And this thing is a high-res scanner. However, this is a bit of old technology. Now, just because it's old doesn't mean to say it's not very good. Back in the day, when negatives and slides were the be-all and end-all of photography, these things, when they came out, had to be absolutely top of the line. They had to produce images that were good enough to go on billboards. So this is a Canon scan 9900 F. In a similar time frame to this, there were scanners being made by the likes of Nikon, they made a cool scan, there was Polaroid, Sprint scan, Canon made this scanner, there was also the Epsom. A lot of people on YouTube are still using the Epsom scan because they actually upgraded all the drivers, but these things never really got the drivers upgraded, which is why they're so cheap, because in modern computers they're absolutely worthless. But the quality you get from them is amazing. They stopped making the drivers for this when Windows 7 came out. So if you've got a computer with Windows XP, Windows ME, or Windows 7, you will be able to use this scanner. Unfortunately, the computer I had with those died. So I then went and got an older laptop, and I stole this from my mother, don't tell her. She won't know it's gone. Uh, I wiped everything off it, this had Windows 10 running on it. I wiped everything off and reinstalled Windows XP because I had a disk. Once you've got that, then you can link up the software from the scanner to the computer. You can still get the drivers and the software for this online and I'll put the link in the description box below. You don't necessarily need it, but I use Adobe Photoshop 7. But I had that on my old computer, and so I just reinstalled it on here, but you don't necessarily need it, but that's what I'm gonna to use today. Uh, but I will show you how to do it without it, with just the uh, Canascan software on there. So there's some other things we're gonna need. If we're handling negatives, uh, we're gonna need some gloves. These are just cotton, clean cotton gloves, just so you don't get fingerprints all on them. I'm going to use a lint-free cloth just to keep this wiped down and I'm going to use uh, an air blower just to, uh, to get any dust off because the thing that is an enemy of anyone that's doing scanning is dust and you'll always get dust spots. Sometimes when it comes to the older negatives, uh, look, look like they're from the olden days, the dust is not necessarily a problem when it comes to n new slides and negatives then the dust can be a problem going to spend hours and hours and hours cleaning it up. So, gloves go on. I could do a Michael Jackson, but I'm not going to. 
with a lot of these flatbed scanners, under here is the light that illuminates the other side of the negatives and slides. So you just need to please remove before scanning. And I'm going to have to take my gloves off now to get this done. So that just lifts off. And that comes off. And that is your scan area. You can just chuck that over there. When you buy one of these things, you need to make sure it comes with all the inserts. If it doesn't, these things can set you back $50, 30 pounds, if you can find them. So we've got a slide insert, a medium format and large format insert, and then a film insert. So let's look at 35 millimeter negatives. You've got color and you've got black and white. So I'll just pop my gloves on. And with the color negatives, these can come in just slung into one of these things, which isn't ideal. Or they do come in these as well, which is better. But because these were general purpose films, they were just slung any old way because people just thought they were going to use the print. So this one, now you've got a shiny side and you've got a dull side, which they call the emulsion side, but it's easier to show you on the black and white as it's a bit more pronounced. Now you just push those up to this little bar there. So with the black and white, now this is shown what can happen. With process houses back in the day, they used to just shove them into these standard format negative holders. And if you've got an extra one, they wouldn't have used another strip to protect the negative. What they ended up doing is just shoving it in. And as you can see, this one's got bent and that won't be any good for scanning, unfortunately. So let's have a, a look at the one we're gonna use. Let's go for that one. And then what I'll do, I'll just show you the side there. You can see that it, that's a, a lot more matte than that side, which is shiny. And the matte side needs to be facing up. It's just so the when the scanner scans, it scans the image around the right way and not around the wrong way, and you have to flip it in Photoshop. Not that it's a massive issue, but... So we'll just pop that in. These can close down. Make sure that you get those locked in because they hold the film straight. I'm just going to lift this out because I can see some dust on there. Place it back in the holder and then that comes down. What we'll do first, we'll do a version with just the Canascan toolkit software. So you've got different options here. You've got platen, which is the prints, but we're not using that. We've got film, which is obviously what we're using. And then auto, which I never normally use. You want to display thumbnails. And the quality, I always go for the biggest quality. On this toolkit, it's 800. When I show you what you can do in Photoshop, you can actually increase that to 3200 DPI, which is a lot, lot better quality. You can name the image so I'm just going to name it film one it'll ask you what type of image you want to save it as and you've got on this option you've got BMP JPEG or TIFF we're all familiar with JPEGs and TIFFs I tend to go for the TIFF file because it's a lossless file so you get the maximum amount of quality what we're trying to do here is create a raw file of the analog raw file which is the negative and then scan and then what that will do, that will warm up the light, get the light to an even balanced colour temperature, and then it will make a, a scan of that overall area, just a, a quick scan, so you can then pinpoint which images you want and make your selections from that. So that brings up each individual image that's on those negatives. It automatically adjusts them so they look like positives. 
uh, and you can see that these are some underwater shots I have no idea where they're from you can select which ones you want or you can select all the frames uh, and then you've got two different screens if you've got more pictures obviously it makes more screens so we're going for 12, 7 and we'll go for 13 as well So I'm going to do the colour and the black and white together, but I'm just going to scan them as colour and then I can convert the black and white to a monochrome if I want to, but it will still scan in black and white because there's obviously no colour in the negative. So we'll go to hit next, and then that will adjust the lamp again to make sure the exposure is correct, that it sees the exposure is correct, and then it will make the scan. And that's the image straight out of the scanner. As you can see at the top there, there's a hair or something on there. Uh, and if I zoom in, you'll be able to see that actually there's quite a lot of scratches on the actual negative. And that's come from the fact that the processor at the time just shoved all the negatives into one sleeve rather than put them into individual sleeves. Uh, it wasn't too difficult to, uh, to clone out in Photoshop. I just used the clone tool and, and ran over the, the scratches there and it got rid of those quite easily. So what I then did is zoomed into 100% and then looked over the whole image to find all the dust that I could and I've highlighted those in red and you can see that there's actually quite a bit of that. Um, I decided to discard this one and then I moved straight on to the next image which had less scratches and where I made it slightly darker to get the highlights in the top of the girl's mask, the face has gone a little bit red and when I zoom in you can actually see that there's a lot more dust marks and bear in mind this is underwater and it's got quite a lot of negative space around it there's actually quite a lot of things that underwater photographers call backscatter which are little tiny particles in the water but you can't really tell the difference between those and dust marks so I just highlighted the whole lot and then got rid of them again in Photoshop using the clone tool and that was the final image now that is just from the CanoScan software and it didn't do a particularly bad job but when you put it through Photoshop you get a lot more clarity to the image and I'll just put the two side by side here and you can see the camera scan software produced a really nice looking image but there's a lot more clarity in the water behind I was able to get a lot more shadow detail I was able to get a lot more detail in the mid-tones the depth of the blue is a lot stronger and overall you can see just how different the two images are. I did try with the CanaScan software image to get a much more vibrant image but it, it just didn't have the information that was required. So moving on to the black and white image this is a shot of Borobudur in Indonesia and I went there on a really rainy day and you can see that the pathway there which is wet is really blown out. There's very little detail in any of that that I could save through that CanaScan software so I opted then to open it in Photoshop so I opened up Photoshop and go to File, Import, and then Canascan 9900F, bring that up, and that produces a preview of the image that I can then start to work with and bring down the exposure. And this is the original image straight out of the scanner. As you can see, it's quite a lot darker, but there's an awful lot more information in the highlights, the mid-tones, and the shadows. And what I was able to then achieve through Photoshop is a much more dramatic image and it's got good tone throughout the mid-tones it's got quite a bit of detail in a lot of the highlight areas and the dark areas I was able to get a much greater dynamic range that's the color and black and white negatives done and I'm just going to move on to the color slides now these as you can see they come in sheets like this and they're all mounted or sometimes they'll come in the, the original box sometimes they'll come unmounted in sleeves very much like negatives but these are, are mounted positives and I'm gonna do this one which is a, an image I took a few years ago of a bull shark and we need to make sure we get the right insert so that's the slide insert we don't necessarily need the gloves for this one but we do need to make sure everything's as dust free as we can make it so that goes that way around and because this is a slide that can go 
down with. And we close that up. Now what I'm going to do is use Photoshop this time. Now the difference between the Canon software and the Photoshop uh, import software is quite dramatic. So what we want to do first is make sure we've got color pause film which is positive for slides we're in color and 35 millimeter slide then we'll just hit preview and it will create a preview on the screen now you can do up to eight slides and you can select them all or you can just select the, the one you've got what the software will do will work out a rough exposure and then you can refine it a little bit more to actually get the desired result. Now you have to bear in mind that this is a low resolution screen because it's only a cheap laptop. So what I've got to do is compensate for the fact that you're not going to get all the colour definition in here. And make quite a flat image but make sure all the black information is there and definitely all the white information because that's what these lose quite a lot of. So this image is actually going to look pretty awful because what we're trying to do is recreate a raw image really the one that we can work on in Photoshop to get the colors just as we want them so once you've got the image as you want it hit scan and then the machine will do its thing and the resulting image comes up and you can see that it's actually quite flat there's not much in difference between the highlights and the low lights but there's detail in everything from the blacks to the whites and that allowed me to work on it again in Photoshop on my modern computer and actually produce an image. I didn't have to do an awful lot to this image because it was actually quite good tonally anyway but it just allowed me just to lift the shark off the background just a little bit just to produce an image with quite a lot of good punch to it. So that's basically how you do a colour positive. You make sure that the whites aren't clipped, the blacks aren't clipped and you've got a nice sort of flat image with the colours sort of roughly right as, unless you're using a calibrated screen on a high-res computer. With the medium format obviously these are quite large. Now these these come from my 100 year old camera so they're actually quite large negatives and you've got a choice. You've got the medium format size or the 5.4 size which is large format so if we pop those in. Now these ones are cut up fairly small and I'm going to go for... And this is where you need the gloves again because you're handling negatives and there's no protection for them once they're out of the sleeve. I'm going to go for this image okay and then we go back into the software so we, we go back to the main and we can tell it that it's a black and white negative film we'll tell it it's a gray scale we'll use the same DPI so we would produce a really big file now we'll do a preview and there you've got a nice sized image and then you can see where the whites are clipped or the blacks are clipped so here we can go to the settings now you can either do a, an auto exposure Calculations for that are, are normally all right if you've got a very well balanced image. If you've got an image with heavy whites or heavy darks, then it does throw it out as a normal light meter would do. So you can take that off auto exposure and you can, because it's a negative, if you add to that, it will darken the image. And if you want to lighten it, you go down to 50%. So I'm just going to take that to 130. And that's just darkened it off enough and I can see the whites aren't clipped anymore hit the scan and then the machine will go through the scan obviously this is a much bigger negative than the 35 mil slide so it's going to take even longer but once I'm done I'll jump into Photoshop on my other computer and show you the final image now bearing in mind that this was taken with a camera that's a hundred years old I think this is a really good image it actually looks like it was taken a hundred years ago of someone that's maybe been time traveling now these are glass negatives and they come from about the 1890s maybe even earlier than that they were quite delicate uh, they're always going to be quite dirty I picked these up in a second-hand camera shop that I go to which is where I bought my camera 
Uh, but you can find these in attics of gra grandparents can have these because these could be their grandparents and some people obviously keep these as keepsakes for the family and you can hand them down through generations and you actually get a piece of your family history but at the moment it's completely worthless if I had just a 35 millimeter slide scanner wouldn't be able to do anything with it but because I've got this flatbed scanner you just make sure that the right side is down gently put it into the frame close it down go to main you're on black and white negative film again now this time you want the 4x5 and it will run through just like all, this, all the others and it comes up with a preview there and with the glass ones I really do like to have the edges in this looks like there's a lady with a white dress or something on and that's really quite clipped so I'm gonna have to go even further with this one so I'll go to 150 and that's taken that down a little bit uh, I'll just check the histogram and we are a little bit clipped on the black end so if we do something with the gamma take the gamma up okay and again we're going to go for the highest resolution which is 3200 dpi and then we're going to scan that and again because you're stepping up in size the scan takes even longer but you are going to be able to do absolutely everything you want to with that file so once this image is scanned I'm going to put them onto a memory stick take them over to my other computer my modern computer now you can either put them into Lightroom and work on them in Lightroom or you can work with them directly in Photoshop I tend to use Photoshop you can balance out the contrast you can get the whites right the blacks right get the color the way that you want it if they're color if they're really old black and whites you might want to add a little bit of a, a sepia tone just to show that they're really old you can do that with with these and they won't look too fake as long as you don't go too over the top and this image actually shows just how much detail and quality there were in cameras of that age there's a little bit of motion blur in some of the subjects because of the exposure was quite a long time but overall this is a really really nice image that captures a piece of history so overall I'm absolutely thrilled with the way that this scanner has reproduced an image that is well over 100 years old I hope you like this video I'm passionate about this sort of thing so I'm going to be showing you a load more of the negatives that I found in junk shops and all that sort of stuff in another video but if you like this video hit the like hit me a subscribe to find out when my next videos are coming up and I'll see you next time so thanks for watching